Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Alex Proskurin and today I'm going to talk about optimal trading rules detection on the concurrent trade, capital constraints and transaction costs. I'm co-founder and CIO of Machine Factor Technologies, the technology company which provides consulting services to asset managers and financial machine learning applications. Our team of experts in algorithmic trading, data science, and finance helps invested managers to apply financial machine learning in a clear, robust, and what is the most important, interpretable way. Our company offers such services as outsourcing investment strategy research, consulting in machine learning applications for algorithmic trading, asset allocation and portfolio construction, strategy backtest, overfit detection. I'm also a co-author of ML FinLab open source Python package, which implements various uh, tools used in uh, algorithmic trading strategies research and specifically financial machine learning tools. So let's start with a short lecture overview. Investment management problems require domain specific labeling techniques such as triple barrier or trend scan. And as a result of that, the researcher needs to find optimal trading rules used to label the data set. Because, for example, triple barrier algorithm needs to have stop loss and fixed profit levels as uh, parameters. And trans canyon la labeling needs a look forward window as a parameter. That is why we need to find the parameters used to label our data set. But in this case, we need to take not only into account the returns of signals which were generated under these labels, but also capital restrictions and transaction costs as a function of stop loss and fixed profit levels. Let's consider a small example. If you label our data set with a, a triple barrier labeling using tight fixed profit and stop loss levels, the system will commit lots of small trades with a relatively small average gain and loss and the average position holding time will be quite low. In this case, we will be able to allocate more capital to each individual signal. On the other hand, if we generate the data set by using narrow fixed profit and, st and stop loss, the average return of each individual signal will be higher. But in this case, we'll have lots of overlapping signals and uh, consecutive bets. In this case, we need to somehow spread our capital between currently active signals. And we need to take that into account when we detect optimal trading rules for our machine learning system. So in this lecture, we'll discuss how to include capital constraints and transaction costs in optimal trading rule detection on the example of VIX futures trading strategy. The second point we'll discuss is how increasing or decreasing the accuracy rate of your machine learning impacts expected average sharp ratio of your model and what is the most important which accuracy rate leads to sharp ratio required by the investment team or external client before digging into optimal training rules detection let's briefly discuss labeling techniques used to label the data set so the first one is triple barrier labeling this algorithm was suggested by marcus lopez de prado in his book, Advances in Financial Machine Learning. So the idea of this algorithm is to set up uh, three barriers for each sample in our data set. So the first one is upper horizontal, which is a proxy to fixed profit level. The second one is stop loss. And the third one is a vertical barrier. The vertical barrier is a maximum time we can hold a position if none of horizontal barriers was hit. The first important note on this algorithm is that fixed profit and stop loss levels are set as a number of asset standard deviations rather than fixed percentages. We do that in order to take into account assets volatility regimes because in low volatility regimes expected gain and loss will be lower comparing to uh, more volatile or market turmoil uh, regimes. The second important note is that triple barrier labeling can be used in two settings. So the first setting is that we want to build a trend model and we need to somehow detect positive trends and negative trends. So in this case, our, if the upper horizontal barrier was hit, which is a proxy to fixed profit, 
it means that this label corresponds to positive trend. If the lower horizontal barrier was hit, it corresponds to a negative trend. If a vertical barrier was hit, we need to define what to do with that. So the first idea is to label the sample as zero. In this case, we move from binary classification problem to a multi-class classification. The second approach is to use the difference between time when, between time when the label was generated and time when the label was triggered and uh, label the data set by using the sign of price difference. So, so let's take a look at two small examples to get a better intuition behind triple barrier labeling. So here we set, for this sample, we set fixed profit and stop loss level or horizontal barriers. Uh, and as you can see here, the lower horizontal barrier was hit, was hit first. And in this case, um, we say that this label value is minus one, which corresponds to a negative trend. In this case, we set up fixed profit level, upper horizontal barrier, stop loss level, lower horizontal barrier, and the vertical barrier. So in this case, none of the horizontal barriers was hit. So we hit a vertical barrier, which corresponds to maximum time and position. And as we discussed it above, we have two options how to deal with that. In our example, we will use the difference between the price when when the label was started and the price when the label was triggered. So in this case, the label value, value will be one. The second algorithm used uh, massively to uh, label financial data sets uh, is so-called trans-scanning labels. In some strategies, the researcher might, may not want explicitly set a fixed profit or stop loss level but rather detect overall trend direction, hold the position until the trend was changed. So uh, this algorithm was also suggested by Marcos Lopez de Prado. And the idea of trend scanning labeling is to fit a multiple look forward linear regressions and define the one which yields maximum T value. Based on the maximum T value regression, we defined what, 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 what would be the trend in the future. Now we can move to optimal trading rules detection problem. So as we discussed above, uh, triple barrier labeling, trans canyon labeling have several parameters which need to be defined. Sometimes we do know what kind of parameters should be set, but usually we need to find the parameters which would uh, yield the most uh, optimal risk adjusted performance. So the first idea is just to look through all possible combinations of fixed profit, stop loss levels, and maximum time uh, in position, and define the one which yields a maximum sharp ratio on uh, the history of the, the asset which we would like to trade. However, in this case, there, there is a very high probability to overfit our trading rule, because in this case, we just simply um, curve fit our trading rules under the history of uh, traded asset. What Marcus Lopez de Prado suggests is to backtest our trade rules on many synthetic asset paths to tackle the problem of overfit. So the idea is to generate Monte Carlo simulations of traded asset and to measure the performance of trading rule on many asset paths and find the distribution of sharp ratios and define the optimal trading rule as the one which yields maximum average sharp ratios on generated market scenarios. So here we can see a heat map of trading rules for triple barrier labeling generated for mean reverting Ornstein Wellenberg process. So as we have mentioned above, we set up stop loss and fixed profit levels as number of standard deviations and values on these heat maps are corresponding sharp ratios. As we have mentioned above, when we want to detect optimal trading rules, we need to take into account not only the returns which were generated from uh, these labels, but also capital allocations and restrictions and transaction costs uh, for each signal in our data set. So on high level, our strategy research is a sum of 
capital allocations to each individual signal multiplied, multiplied by the signal return minus costs associated with this return. In this case, costs would be our transaction costs, execution costs, uh, slippage costs, etc. So let's take a look at, at a toy example to understand what is label concurrency. So let's consider that we start at T1 and we generate a signal at T1 and enter the position. And we hold that position until T5. So probably at T5, either horizontal barrier or vertical barrier was hit. However, at T3, we receive the next signal for our training strategy and the same for T4. And here comes the problem of label concurrency or overlapping trades, because in this case, we need to somehow allocate capital to the signal which was generated at T3 and T4. That is why we cannot allocate 100% of our capital to each signal. We need to somehow spread our capital so that we match our capital constraints. So let's take a look at another example. So we have a trading strategy which generates only long bets on, uh, on uh, the curve um, on the slide. And uh, the green dots um, indicate points where the signals were generated. So let's first consider a trading rule with a very tight fixed profit and stop loss levels. So as you can see here, none of our signals overlap because we have very tight stop, tight stop loss and fixed profit levels. Our average time in a position is very low and that is why we can allocate 100% of our capital to each trade. However, on the other side, the average loss and the average gain of each signal is, rel is relatively small. Furthermore, for example, for the first two signals, we would hit our tight stop loss levels. However, in the future, uh, these two signals could possibly generate positive returns. But due to the fact that our stop loss are very, narrow, are very tight, we would hit them and liquidate the position. On the other hand, we can generate narrow fixed profit and stop loss levels. In this case, the first two signals would generate positive returns but here we start to face a problem of label concurrency. We won't be able to allocate the whole capital to each signal because they start to overlap. And we need to somehow spread the capital between signals. So for example, this signal, this signal, and this signal overlap. However, these two signals do not overlap. So here we would be able to allocate almost all of our capital. In this case, the average signal return is much higher but the capital allocated is lower. And somehow we need to take that into account. We want to detect optimal trading rules for our system. So how can we do that? Let's follow the position sizing budgeting approach suggested by Marcus Lopez de Prado. So what we do is we compute the maximum number or some other quantile of concurrent long bets and the maximum number of short bets. And at each point of time, we use the next formula to define the capital allocation to each signal. So what we do is we take into account currently active long bets, divided by the maximum number of concurrent long bets, and subtract number of concurrent short bets, divided by the maximum number of short bets. So in this case, in this case under this approach we won't hit our capital constraints because we distribute our capital based on the number of currently active long bets and short bets. The second problem which we face in optimal trading rule uh, detection is so-called model accuracy because on the one hand assuming that 100% of our hypothetical machine learning model predictions are correct is quite non-realistic but on the other hand we do not know in advance what will be the model accuracy. So one of the ideas how to solve that is to fix some kind of level of model accuracy, let's say 60%, and generate a random discrete variable. 
which takes the value of correct prediction with a probability of 60%, and otherwise it takes uh, incorrect prediction. Under this procedure, we will generate pseudo-model predictions, 60% of which are correct, and 40% of which are incorrect in case of binary classification setting. So let's take futures, uh, mixed futures model as, a, as an example and look through the whole process and see how we detect optimal trading rules for VIX futures trading strategy. So let's first discuss some model assumptions. So we would like to define optimal trading rules, meaning that it is fixed profit, stop loss, and maximum time in a position for an intraday strategy which trades front months VIX futures contract. As we would like to detect trading rules for a trend model, we will use symmetric fixed profit and stop loss levels because we don't have any assumption on the distribution of long, uh, of long trends and short trends. The data which we use are volume bars of front months, VIX futures contract. We generate uh, volume bars with, of size 1,500 which is approximately 2% of VIX front month's uh, futures contract daily volume. As we have discussed, our labeling technique is a triple barrier labeling. We would say that our hypothetical uh, model accuracy is 60%. And here comes a very important aspect of trading rules detection. So what we would also like to do is to account for transaction costs and execution and slippage costs of our model. So for transaction costs, we would say that we spent around $4 per round trip. And uh, for execution costs, we would like to model our position entry and exit with market order. If we take a look at VIX futures contract, we can see that the minimum tick size of VIX futures is five cents, meaning that on average, our bid-ask spread is, five, is also five cents. If we also take a look at the average price range of VIX futures contract, we can see that uh, it, is, it usually trades at levels or from 14 to 20, and five cents of bid-ask spread is quite, is quite a big relative bid-ask spread for this type of contract. So in this case, if we model our position entry and exit using market orders only, we would pay 10 cents on each transaction, as a slippage cost, which, which, a, which is a substantial cost taking into account uh, prices, price range under which VIX futures contract is trading. And that is why it is very important to take that into account in optimal trading rules detection, because in this case, we would like to penalize the model which trades too often and generates uh, signals with, with small returns, because in real time trading, we would pay too much on our slippage costs. Let's first discuss key notations used in this example. So K is the number of Monte Carlo simulations, which we'll use in our optimal trading rules detection. M is the length of one uh, Monte Carlo pass. P is a triple barrier rule with fixed profit, stop loss, and maximum time in a position. As we would like to train a intraday trading algorithm, uh, we set a maximum number in uh, maximum time in position in hours. And PBIC is a universe of uh, trading rules, meaning that these are possible combinations of fixed profit and stop loss levels and maximum time in position, which we would like to test for. So the first step is to generate synthetic paths. There are various ways to approach this problem. We can use standard bootstrap technique or block bootstrap. In this case, we used our proprietary time series sampling algorithm, which uses machine learning models to uh, train on uh, real observed uh, paths and um, generate uh, synthetic, uh, synthetic paths used, path used to detect optimal training rules. Um, so here we use uh, we use uh, continuous front months uh, VIX futures contract, which is relatively adjusted, uh, fitted into the algorithm and generate 
various uh, scenarios of observed uh, fraud months contract. So the next step is that for each path from our um, Monte Carlo simulation, we take the combinations, the combination of fixed profit, stop loss, and maximum time and position, and label each path by using this trading rule. In our case, we used ML Thin Labs get labels function, which applies triple barrier labeling to a series of uh, closed prices to generate uh, labels. As a result of this function, we have a data frame with index corresponding to label start times, T1 corresponding to time when either horizontal or vertical barrier was hit, target meaning the volatility which was used to label uh, our data set, PT SL corresponding to profit taken and stop loss levels. So in this case, we multiply PT by the volatility target and set a fixed profit level and SL for stop loss level and the final return which was generated by this label. So if we use the sign of this return, we can generate label values uh, in our problem. It is binary classification problem, so the label value can be either one or minus one. The next step is to generate our pseudo model predictions with a accuracy rate of 60. In this case, we will generate a model, we will generate model predictions for which 60% of these predictions are correct and 40 of them are incorrect. And uh, in this case, we would uh, have a model with 60% accuracy. After that, we need to take into account position size and uh, we need to take into account position sizing, label concurrency, and, trans and transaction and execution costs of our model. So the adjusted return for signal i is a prediction for, for the signal multiplied by the return minus transaction and execution costs. In our case, transaction and execution costs are $4 per round trip and five cents uh, on both entry and exit point uh, of our signal. When we have modified, uh, modified um, returns, we should get the capital allocations for each individual signal. In this case, we use ML Labs function, which is called bet size budget, which implements the formula which we described above. It uses the information about uh, label start time and end time, which should be stored in events T1 object and information about side predictions. So in this case, we should give our model um, the information about label start time, end time, and our pseudo model prediction. As a result of that, we can average, we can find the sharp ratio for, for, for a synthetic pass, which was labeled by using trader rule. Uh, the average of re modified returns multiplied by uh, capital allocations divided by standard deviation of uh, capital allocations multiplied by modified strategy returns. If we repeat this procedure for each synthetic pass, we would have many, uh, many, sh uh, many sharp ratios for, um, for a set of generated Monte Carlo simulations. So instead of having just one estimate of expected sharp ratio, we have the whole distribution. So here we have a sharp ratio distribution for uh, a trading rule combination with 60% model accuracy. So as you can see here, despite the fact that the average sharp ratio is somewhere around 1.8, the sharp ratio distribution is quite volatile. There, there are trading, there are um, synthetic paths which generated a sharp ratio of 2.5, and some of them generated a sharp ratio less than 1.25. And this is one of the reasons why we should use Monte Carlo simulations and backtest our training rules on synthetic data in order to generate the most robust training rules. So as we have described above by applying the procedure described above, um, for each synthetic pass, we get a vector of sharp ratios. So the, the, the distribution of sharp ratios and we find the optimal training rule as the one which has the maximum 
average Sharpe ratio on all synthetic paths. If we apply uh, this algorithm to our VIX futures trading example, we can see that we that the optimal fixed profit and stop loss level is two standard deviations, and the maximum time in the position is 33 hours. The average Sharpe ratio in this case will be 1.79. The next step which we can do is to understand how changing the accuracy rate of our model will change the expected Sharpe ratio of final model by using optimal trading rules. So here we use the most optimal trading rule, two standard deviations, 33 hours uh, in a position, and we start modifying the model accuracy from 60% uh, by increasing it and decreasing that, and, in, and decreasing that. So what it gives us is a plot of model sensitivity to our model accuracy. Why it is so important? Because for some models with advanced execution, like uh, high frequency models, it is more than enough to, uh, to have a uh, classification model which yields predictions with accuracy of 51%. Uh, with this accuracy, sometimes it is enough to generate stable uh, risk adjusted performance and high returns. However, for this type of models as VIX futures, uh, with naive execution system and quite high uh, execution and slippage costs, what we can see that relatively high model accuracy of 60% uh, yield sharp ratio of 1.8. However, when we increase the model accuracy to 65%, our sharp ratio starts to um, uh, increase. So by having this curve, we can understand what should be the model accuracy to get the desired Sharpe ratio. This, this curve gives us the point in time when our research team should stop researching the trend model and start either backtesting that or validating that or paper trading that. So by using this type of plot, we may understand what is the horizon of our research. So as we can see here that when the model accuracy starts to grow to 65%, the Sharpe ratio would be somewhere around 2.7. For 70%, uh, so the Sharpe ratio starts to climb to 4. And uh, this is an average Sharpe ratio on generated Monte Carlo simulations. What we can also see is that model is very sensitive to accuracy drop. So if we drop our accuracy to 55%, the Sharpe ratio massively decreases to 0 0.5. Uh, if the model accuracy is 52%, the Sharpe ratio is almost 0 0.2. So by uh, using this framework, we can target our accuracy rate to get the expected Sharpe ratio. So to conclude on this lecture, we have discussed how synthetic backtesting of synthetic data addresses the problem of curve overfitting to define optimal training rules. The, we, have we have discussed the framework which takes into account not only signal returns, but also capital allocations and transaction and execution costs in optimal training rule detection. And we have discussed how the research team may target model metric as a function of expected sharp ratio. By using this framework, we, can not all, we may not only target our accuracy rate, uh, we can also target F1 score, precision score, recall score to understand what would be the expected sharp ratio of final model. Uh, also with this framework, we can use, uh, you can use your proprietary position sizing models not only the one which was uh, discussed in this lecture, uh, to generate optimal trading rules. Thank you very much for your attention. If uh, you have some questions regarding the lecture, it would be a pleasure for me to answer them.